Among the reactions to the mass shooting at a historic black church in South Carolina was a prayer vigil last night at Bethel AME Church in Jamaica Plain. The shooting does appear racially motivated and there's been soul searching on many fronts about race, gun control and even mental health. To talk about last night's vigil and thoughts from Boston is our guest, the pastor from Bethel AME, Reverend Dr. Ray Hammond. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Reverend. Glad to be here, Chris. First off, the thoughts through your mind when you found out about this. I was really shocked, stunned, as I would have been, I think, if any house of worship would have been uh, attacked. It was particularly stunning because this is part of a denomination that I'm a part of. This is a, a building I visited a number of years ago with my children. We were on vacation in the South Carolina area, and I said, you know, we've got to go by and see this place. This is where uh, Denmark Vesey attempted to organize people to rebel against slavery. This is a place where... Um, a lot of the activism around the civil rights movement, uh, and it's continued to be a site of uh, activism on behalf of all the citizens of South Carolina. So it was uh, just devastating. And uh, you, you talked about the history. This church was was burned by oh, the antagonists. Oh, burned. Uh, yeah. uh, then at a later date, leveled by an earthquake, and uh, this is the third building that's uh, um, been built. Uh, but as I say, through all of that, it has it has just been a real. Um, clarion uh, site for uh, for justice. You know, uh, there is a history of attacks on black churches, and up here in Boston, maybe people might say, "Well, that's the South, that's history. It's not here and now." But 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 is it here and now? Well, it is here and now still. I mean, to the extent that you've got people who uh, are, are threatened by what they see as uh, black people or, sadly, immigrants or you name it. I mean, we, we unfortunately have people who still have this kind of us-them mentality. Uh, and, of course, race is one of the great uh, divides across which people do that. Um, and uh, this is the kind of thing that white supremacists feed on all the time. And in this case, it sounds like they got a young man who was very susceptible to it and acted on it. The fact that this happened in a church and, and while people had gathered for Bible study, um, I, I've never seen that kind of a combination. I mean, I've seen people do things in the dead of night because they're cowards, but this is so out there and blatant there. Well, you know, there certainly have been a few other uh, attacks on churches. There was one out in Colorado. I haven't had a chance to just kind of review all of them. So it's not unheard of, um, still very rare. I don't know of anywhere I think th these many lives have been lost. And um, um, that was sobering. And as I say, when you look at this, it, it, you'd almost more understand if someone just came in shooting uh, randomly people they had had absolutely no contact with. Uh, but I'm hearing now possibly he for a moment thought about it because people were so nice to him. And, uh, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's, a, it's mystifying, it's um, painful, it's sobering. Talk about uh, the way people can be recruited to do things. And, and even if this person was acting on his own, he had to have been influenced by something. Um, you mentioned the Internet. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a different ball game now. Absolutely, uh, and, and you know, and, and it's going to take a while before we sort out w what level of, um, uh, of mental illness is there here, and what kind, uh, what level of just hatred is there, what level of there of uh, of a young, impressionable guy feeling perhaps a little alienated. Uh, influenced uh, perhaps by others around him, uh, and in these days, it doesn't have to be your family or friends. It can be the, the um, you know, the mullah on the the website. It can be the white supremacist demagogue on the website, Twitter feed, Facebook page, um, who gives you some sense that you can have significance if you just step up and and. Uh, fight the race war, fight the jihad, whatever it might be. You can, your life can mean something. You can somehow cure this alienation that you feel. Looking at, a, at the broader picture, a lot was made yesterday of the Confederate flag flying outside the Capitol in South Carolina. And uh, you, know, you have all these states with voter suppression going on. I mean, there's a lot of people who are, they're not terrorists, they're not criminals, but they are playing a race card. 
Uh, I think that's absolutely true. I, I mean, I, uh, I, even with people that I deeply disagree with, I always try to kind of understand why might they think the way they do. And I've talked to people in the South, and uh, you know, there it's the war between the states. And they're up the here too. Yeah. That's exactly right. No, but I'm, uh, I'm there it's the war between the states. It's not the Civil War, right? It's the war between the states. And you will encounter a lot of people who feel the sense that somehow the South was done wrong, right? They just were exercising uh, the ability to continue their way of life. That's often the way it's talked about. Now, of course, uh, nobody wants to be completely honest about the fact that that way of life included the brutal subjugation of millions of people of African descent. Um, and, uh, you know, well, 150 years later, we're still coming to grips with that as a nation. Um, and so I think um, for some people, the Confederate flag is just holding on to something from our past that we think of as glorious without really any regard for the fact, I think, that uh, this is extremely painful for the people who paid the price for what they call glory. You know, Faulkner was the one who's always quoted, uh, the past ain't over. I, I <laughs> it look ain't at even this, the past. I, right. I, look, I look at this and I'm thinking, you know, there was Reconstruction, then there was the backlash to Reconstruction, and I'm saying, haven't we put that behind us? No, no. Uh, and I wouldn't expect to. I don't think you put 400 years of history behind you. Really, it's, it's longer than that because what happened, sadly, was in the wake of the Civil War, we had a brief interlude um, of, um, of movement toward perhaps some degree of political equity and the beginnings maybe of some economic equity. And then, quite frankly, the North lost interest and the, the whole goal, and I think you have a whole school of scholars who are kind of looking at this again, was let's, let's all be one again. And yet again, if that came at the cost of uh, the rights of black people, well, you know, it's collateral damage, right? Um, and so sadly, uh, after a very brief interlude, you've got Jim Crow, you've got separate but equal, you've got... Um, something that's not quite slavery, but not too much different in terms of the constraints that it puts on people's degrees of freedom. So, as you say, the past was not past. It was, um, um, it, it's really not almost in the civil rights movement that you begin to see that change. So, with that kind of deep, long-lasting, multi-century, brutal history, it's going to take us a little while to get over it. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Reverend Ray Hammond. We'll have more news in just a moment.